Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is on metering modes for bird photographers. So I'm down here on the Washington coast taking pictures of shorebirds, gulls, terns, and bald eagles, and experimenting with different metering modes. I want to see which one works the best in certain situations. So I tried front lighting, I tried some back lighting, and I just wanted to get a sense of how the metering modes vary. Now I have to confess right, right off the top that you know, I did not see that much of a difference when I was actually taking the pictures and changing the metering modes. I'm hoping that when I get back in the office, I'll be able to see a difference on my larger monitor at home. If you want to take better bird pictures and learn more about bird photography, hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So your camera comes with a really sophisticated and pretty accurate metering system. But the problem is, is that it wants to average everything to 18% gray. So if you've got white like snow, the camera wants to average it to 18% gray and it's gonna make dull snow. Or if you've got a dark bird like a raven or a crow, it's gonna make it gray. It's gonna to try to make it 18% gray. 18% gray is halfway in between white and black. And your camera thinks that that's the correct exposure. So we as artists need to determine what we want the image to look like. So we might have a turn that looks angelic and it's flying up in the clouds or something. And we might want to have it to be really bright image. We might want to not blow out the highlights, but you know, push the exposure so it's a really bright image. Our camera won't do that for us automatically. So if you're shooting in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode, you can use exposure compensation and dial in more light. If you're shooting in manual mode, you just simply overexpose by changing the aperture, the shutter speed, or the ISO. And then if you've got a raven or a crow, you're gonna to need to underexpose if you're shooting manual mode or dial in less or subtract light if you're shooting in aperture priority or shutter priority mode. You're gonna to wanna to darken the bird because the camera wants to make it light. So our camera thinks 18% gray is the correct exposure. And in reality, there's no correct exposure. The word correct doesn't even enter into this because the best exposure is how you as the artist want the image to look. Now I've done some tutorials on how to expose to the right to not blow out the highlights. I've done some tutorials on how to expose to the right to get rid of noise. But really this one is more about how our camera's working and choices we need to make with our metering modes and then deciding how we want the image to look. We're gonna look at what Olympus calls ESP metering, Canon calls evaluative metering, and Nikon calls matrix metering. And we're also gonna look at center weighted metering, and then we're gonna look at spot metering. So we're gonna look at three different modes. The reason we're looking at those three different modes is those are probably the most popular. Now this ESP slash evaluative slash matrix, that metering mode is probably the default mode for most of the cameras. And it should be because it's pretty much the best one right now as kind of a default automatic setting. Uh, spot metering is a little bit harder to use. Center weighted metering has a couple of things it's still good at, but really it's been replaced by the smarter ESP slash evaluative slash matrix metering mode. So in a very basic way, the way that the ESP slash evaluative slash matrix metering works is that the software divides the frame into different zones and it reads light and dark values per zone, and then it uh, averages to 18% gray, but it puts extra emphasis on the area where you have your focus point. It's gonna make a difference in what kind of metering you get if you're taking a picture of a black and white bird. If you've got a uh, focus point on the black part of the bird, you're gonna get a different exposure than if you say put it on the white head of a bald eagle. And I took some bald eagle pictures yesterday, so we'll see how those turn out and if we can see some difference between the metering modes. We're gonna talk about spot metering and spot metering and also partial metering. Basically what the two of these are doing is measuring specific areas in the frame. And usually that's right where the focus point is. So if it's spot metering, it's between two and 5% of the frame is measured. And in partial metering, it's between eight and 15% of the frame is measured. But they work pretty much the same. They're taking a specific sample and setting your exposure off of that. 
and that can come in really handy if you've got a dark bird on a white background and you're getting the exposure straight right off the bird. You might have to change a little bit of the exposure, but basically you're going to come up with a pretty good exposure. Another case is if you're trying to take pictures of a backlit bird, but you don't want the bird to show that it's backlit, you want the bird to be properly exposed, then I would use spot metering right on the bird and that will take all of the ambient uh, light that's all around the bird that's really brighter and it will discard all of that. And so that could be a really good case for using spot metering. So the last of the three metering modes I want to talk about today is center weighted or average metering mode. The camera metering system places the emphasis on the center of the frame. Now it doesn't pay any attention to where your focus point is and so it's going to just take what's in the center of the frame and put emphasis on that. So if you've got a bird to the outside of that circle that it wants to put the emphasis on, it's not going to correctly expose your picture as much as saying using the ESP evaluative or matrix metering. It can work good in certain situations, but for most of us, we're not going to use it. We're going to use either the evaluative ESP slash matrix, or we're going to use spot metering. Spot metering gives you specific control over where you're going to meter, what your meter is going to do. Evaluative metering gives you the general scene with an emphasis on where the focus point is. All right, so I'm back in the office now. And all of the images that I'm going to show you are raw images. There's no post-processing except cropping them to fit the 16 by 9, you know, aspect ratio of this video. So with the Caspian turn images, I don't know. The background looks the same in all of these pictures. The center weighted one looks a little bit brighter. I just don't see that there's that much difference with those. So here's a detailed shot of the multi-segment metering. It looks pretty normal. The chest is a little bit bright white. I would expect that. On the spot metering one, it's pretty much the same as the multi-segment. There's not that much change to it. I don't see how the light meter has uh, changed very much in this particular case. And then with the center weighted metering here, uh, it's brighter white up in the chest and along the side, but then the wing was covering the side earlier. So all in all, I don't know that I can tell that much difference between these three. And then here we have in the fog, a uh, bald eagles perched on a post. I do not see much difference between multi-segment spot. Here's the multi-segment. This one might be a little bit lighter than the other two. It's uh, kind of hard to tell. But here again, I shot everything in manual mode. Here's the spot metering. This one actually looks a little darker in the uh, back feather. So I think that that might be a slight improvement. And with center weighted, it pretty much looks the same as the spot metering. And then here in the backlit situation, this is where I think I saw the most difference between the three different metering modes. The darkest is this multi-segment metering where the bird and the bird's head is pretty dark. And then with spot metering, the head is a little bit lighter. And so that looks a little bit better. Obviously, we would have to lighten all of these up in post-processing. But the center weighted one actually looks the best for backlighting, just because the head is a little bit wider and there would be less change that we'd have to make there. To sum it up here, I would use the multi-segment metering, ESP, evaluative, or matrix metering. Just in general, all-around shooting situations, I would use it in backlit situations where I wanted the ambient light to show, and I would choose to use this one if the whole frame were evenly lit. I would choose to use spot metering if there's a high contrast situation, if there's a lot of highlights and dark tones, and I want to meter right off the bird to get the best exposure possible. I would also use this when I want absolute control over the exposure of the bird. And I would also use this in high key situations where I want the bird to be exposed so that I can see the detail in the bird, but I don't care about the background and so that the background can be overexplown, the highlights can be blown out. It's kind of a toss up. I don't see that much difference between these. I know there are people that swear by evaluative metering or multi-segment metering. I know there are people that swear by spot metering. But in my test here, I didn't see the huge difference between the three different metering modes that I thought I would find. So it'd be interesting to find out what you guys think about this and if you have tested this and you came up with similar or different results. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this. 
If you want to learn more about bird photography, consider picking up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. Another way that you can learn more about bird photography and improve your skills is to attend one of my workshops, so check those out on my website, timboyerphotography.com. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I will see you next week. Bye.